not working. Right, he's like, thumbs up, no. Okay, all right, so here's the story. Here's the schedule. You know, coming to the end of the semester, I'm sure you appreciate this, right? <clears throat> so this week we have two classes because I think there's no, I know there's no class tomorrow because I think it's a Monday schedule, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and your homework's due Thursday. So today I'm going to do MATLAB so that you can do the homework because otherwise you'll probably do it without my help, but it'll probably be a lot easier if I show you how to do it first. Um, then I, I'm a, like half a lecture behind here, so I'm going to see if I can get caught up. So, I just want to wear it because the, the mic gets it, but... Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? Well, there's a little audio thing. All right, so the good news is that the uh, camera can hear me, but you can't. Okay, maybe, that, maybe that's ideal. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go through here... And what I'm hoping is that we can do this in 50 or 60 minutes, and then I might lecture a little bit on the lecture that I was doing last time, but we'll see how it goes, all right? So this is a very important topic. I think um, of all the things you'd want to use, learn to do in MATLAB, the three things would be, one, solve a system of linear algebraic equations, right? Number two, solve a system of nonlinear algebraic equations. And number three, integrate a system of differential equations. So today I'm going to teach you how to integrate differential equations. Um, and so I'm going to go through the tools that MATLAB has available to do this. And I'm going to give you some examples of how to do it. And then you're going to do an exercise. I think it might guide you through the exercise more than usual to make progress. But we'll see how that goes. OK. So the top is <laughs> just my typical gibberish that says, let's put all the equations in a vector and call it a vector set of, coupled set of differential equations where y is dependent variable vector. x is the independent variable, spatial or time. We have an initial condition, so it's an initial value problem. We're going to integrate these equations forward in time, OK? <coughs> now you see a table here. And the table contains functions that are available in MATLAB to solve differential equation systems. So first of all, I give you the name of the function. I'm going to show you how to use them in a minute. Right, for example, you did this with differential equations. There was two functions to solve, right? F0 and F solve. F0 solved a single equation. F solve solved a system of equations. MATLAB has a lot more options for differential equations. And you can see that there are their names. There's the problems that they, they address. We're going to talk about the difference. But when you have sets of differential equations, sometimes these sets can be something called stiff. They're more difficult problems to solve. And so they have some solvers that are meant kind of generically or called non-stiff problems. <clears throat> then they have some that are, that are specifically for, for differential equations that are stiff, which I'll, I'll teach you what that means soon. And then we're going to learn a few of these methods that are on the right. We had to present this material a little ahead of where I normally would do, so you could have to do the homework. And so these are the numerical methods that underlie these different codes, okay, just so you have an idea what they do. And that, that, this will make a lot more sense, those two columns, as once we <laughs> do the next lecture or two. But for now, we need to do this so, so we can be on schedule for the homework. Okay. <clears throat> so here are the functions. Um, that, that, these are all the functions that are available in MATLAB except this one. This one is for solving something called an implicit differential equation. An implicit differential equation, just for your edification, is one where you can't separate out the derivative. See, normally we can separate out the derivative and say the derivative equals a function of y and x. If you can't separate the derivative out, that's called an implicit differential equation. It looks like this. It's, it's rare. Rare you would encounter such a differential equation in, in chemical engineering. And so I'm not going to talk about it. That's this OD115I. Okay? These other things <coughs> all do the same thing in principle. They solve an initial value problem. You use them like this. This is the syntax. This is how you have to use them in MATLAB. Okay? So this is what you'd issue at the command line, right? the MATLAB command line, that thing. Okay? Something that looks like this. Okay? So let's look at the right-hand side. First of all, solver means one of these names, like ODE23. Okay? I'm going to show you how to use them, obviously. ODE fun is the function of which you're going to evaluate the differential equation. The right-hand side is the differential equation. So. This is the problem we're talking about. 
Okay? Initial value problem. So you have to write a function that evaluates the f's, right? Just like when we solved nonlinear algebraic equations, you had f of x equals zero. You had to write a function that evaluated f of x. Now you have to write a function that evaluates this, this right-hand side of the differential equation, okay? Implicit when you do that is the left-hand side is, is this, okay? So I'll show you this. Um, since this is a differential equation, you have to decide how far you're going to integrate this equation in terms of x. So this x span, okay, is how, over what range do you want to integrate x, okay? So for example, if you're, start, if you're interested in starting at zero, you'll have this. And then you might, if, it's, if time is the independent variable, it might be 20 minutes. It might be 20 meters. It's however long in x you want to integrate, okay? Starting at the initial condition and ending with some time or distance or something like this. Again, I'll show you. Um, y0 is your vector of initial conditions for the dependent variables. And options are, <coughs> are various options you can specify. Um, I don't think we talk a lot about the options. But um, if, t if time allows, I can show you some of the options. You won't need to usually use them, okay? You can change how the integrators work. You can um, get additional information from the integrators. Normally, you don't need to do it, okay? All right, <coughs> so that's that. So here's a, a fun equation, at least I think it's fun. Um, this is the so-called van der Poel equation. So this is a classic equation um, for a sustained oscillator. And so just the way this equation, it's shorthand notation. These are notes one of my TAs made in the past. But that y double prime means second derivative with respect to time, right? And then we have a minus mu, ooh, sorry. Minus mu, what is it? One minus y squared. Am I on the right track here, people? This is really hard. OK. That's the equation you want to solve. OK, that's a, that's a second order differential equation in time. I told you in the past you can take any second order differential equation in time and convert it to two first order differential equations. And that's what I've done to come up with this. Normally, I would show you exactly how I did this, but there's not any time. But I already showed you how to do it. Just go back in the notes. I think it was a lecture or two ago. So any second order differential equation, Remember, I define y1 here to be equal to y. I define y2 to equal dy dt. And then I write two differential equations, one for y1 and y2. And you'll get the equations that I'm showing right here. OK? OK, now there are built-in functions in MATLAB, so I picked this example to solve this particular problem. There's two functions that they've written. One is with this mu value equal to 1. OK? And one is with this mu, mu value equal to 1,000. They're a lot, they end up being a lot different from each other. So for example, I guess I could, even I can remember that, right? I bet I don't. Watch this. BPD1, DP, PD1. Crap. I knew it. Is that the same thing? Maybe try it the other way. There. These guys are pretty proud of this function. It has a single line. There's all the credits for who wrote it. Okay, um, So it just evaluates the right-hand side of the equation. See, w the way this function works, this is the thing I called ODE fun. They're, they're calling it v DP1. <coughs> MATLAB gives you the current value of time and the current value of the y vector of dependent variables. And your job is to evaluate the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, The right-hand side of the equation for this problem is, sorry about this, is, is, those, is those, those things on the right-hand side there. Okay, it's a vector function, and you want to evaluate y2 is the first element and that mu thing. Talking about this is the right-hand side right there. Okay, so they've written a function that does this, <coughs> and there it is. Okay, that's the derivative of y1 right there, if you look at the previous slide, and that's the derivative of y2. Okay separated by a semicolon, which makes it a column vector. Okay? So the idea is MATLAB gives you t and y. Okay? t is the independent variable here. y is the vector, right? two components, y1 and y2, independent dependent variable. And you have to evaluate the function f. It's a vector function. It has two components in this case. Okay? That's your job. 
it's really no different than solving f of x equals zero, where you had to, where you, it gave you x, and you had to, and you had to um, evaluate f of x. Okay. All right. And then they have a similar function for um, if we were really fascinated by this. And the only difference here is they, they have the mu being, being 1,000 instead of 1. Okay? So the, the implication of mu being 1,000 is it's a lot more difficult problem to solve because the problem becomes so-called stiff, which is what, uh, what I'm about to show you. Okay? All right. So let's say, let's look at this command here. Let me copy it and paste it, and then I'll explain it. I don't want you to run it. Stop. That ticks me. No, I lost all the fun. All right. I was hoping for the awe thing, but not until I told you what I was doing. OK. So here's how the function is used, being used. OK. I'm using the MATLAB function called ODE45. I just chose that of the eight different ones you could integrate the equation with. I chose that one. This, so when you want to call a function, you can either put the function in quotes, or you can use this handle thing. So this would be the same as putting VP D1 in quotes, which you've done before, right? Put a single quote on each side. This is, does the same thing, OK? I'm telling it, please integrate this from time equal 0 to time equal 20, OK? And, and the initial condition is y1 equal 2 and y2 equal 0. So that's a single command. And what it's going to do is it's going to produce a, a, a something here. So this is going to be look like this. So it's going to create a vector t, right? That's a bunch of time values that's a big column vector, OK? It's also going to predict give you a y, which has two columns, right? One is for y1 and one is for y2. And these are going to be matching sets, right? At this time, y1 was this and y2 was this. So you can plot them versus each other, OK, in the usual way. <coughs> so that's what I'm doing with the second command. I'm choosing to plot just the first one, y1, right? So I'm saying plot versus time all elements of the first column, which is just y1, OK, versus time. And because I, I want to make every data point a circle, for whatever reason, because it looks cool. Okay? So you know these lines in MATLAB, you can, all you got to do is do help plot, and you can make things different colors, different symbols, all kinds of things. So I want to make this circles, because circles are fun. Okay? And the solution looks like that. Okay? So this is y1 versus time. All right? OK, so that's cool, I think. Now if you want to. I suppose we can, I can do the same thing. Let's see if I can avoid screwing it up. Did you notice it took longer? You may not have noticed, but all right. See this one? There's, there's where mu equals 1. Done. Mu equal done. OK, so you might say, well, that's no big deal. Well, it's only two equations. Um, if it was a much bigger problem, it would matter. And if you, you can see the. That's not what it should look like. Okay, <laughs> that's because it. I think. Let's try this and see if it's. What the? That doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, I didn't plot long enough time. Yeah, tricked. The, so the thing here is the oscillations are much slower. I only plotted like the first twenty time units, which was way up here, so it looked weird. If you plot for a much longer time, you, look, you see it looks like this. So it's, it's still like a, this, this is what's called a periodic solution, right? It just repeats itself over and over again. You notice the difference is, well, one is it's really slow. Last time we plotted 20 time units, now it's 3,000. But you notice this is incredibly sharp, right, These, this decline here. Um, so this is a hard system to integrate. That's why it took much longer. Because this problem is so-called stiff. When we talk about stiffness, you'll see this. The main point I'm going to try to impart to you now is that as we talk about numerical methods to solve differential equations, then you go to MATLAB to solve them. It's important to match up your problem to the appropriate solver. Like, you can't use these tools with no knowledge of how solutions are solved. That's my point. Like, we're not going to write our own code, so I'm not going to have you do an exercise where you write your own code to integrate an equation, because you can just do it in MATLAB. 
you know, in MATLAB gives you 10 different solvers, you have to know which one you should be using and why. And if it fails, why did it solve? Or if it's really slow, why might it be slow? Whatever, okay? And that's what I'm going to try to impart to you starting today and over the next couple of lectures. Okay, so that's how you use both of these solvers. Now, um, the idea here is this value of mu, this parameter, which is either one or a thousand, affects something called the stiffness of the system. And so if you have more than one differential equation and the problem is stiff, which I'm going to explain to you, what it basically means is, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, probably not, but it means the problem has a wide separation of time scales. It means some things are really fast and th some things are really slow. If a problem has fast dynamics and slow dynamics, this means like, like you might have one eigenvalue that's 0.1 and another eigenvalue that's 1,000. That's a huge separation in the time scale. That, that kind of problem is called stiff. And the reason this, there's a lot of difference between these two problems, because mu, e, mu equals 1 is a nice problem, and mu equals 1,000 is a very stiff problem. Okay? So if we do this little exercise here, using a few tricks in MATLAB, which I'll explain to you. So what am I doing here? I'm integrating the, the model with mu equal 1, just like I did before, except I'm just doing it 10 times. Why would I do it 10 times? Because it'll take longer. And then, I don't know, you've probably never seen this, but if you ever issue a command, you do tick, comma, command, talk, it'll tell you how long it takes to execute that command. Okay? So you can keep track of how long things are taking. You might say, this doesn't matter, but I have, I have some codes that take like four hours. And so then you make some change and you want to know, did it make it faster? You want to go to sleep. <laughs> so you just run this overnight and you see maybe it got reduced to three hours or something like that. Okay, so you do this command and now I do, I don't trust myself to do it without copying from the slides as I've proven to be not very bright. Oh, I could have done this one. Okay, so this is solving the differential equation over this time. Ten times it took, not right, less than a tenth of a second. So here's the same thing. Now I'm using a different solver. I'm, this is a stiff solver. This is a non-stiff solver and a non-stiff model. That works really well. If you use a stiff solver on a non-stiff model, it takes actually a lot longer. That's like, what, eight times longer? You might say it doesn't matter. It's only half a second still. But if you have, if this took you know, 10 minutes, this would take 80 minutes, and it would really make a difference. So the problem, the point is that you have to know something about the characteristics of, of your model, which we're going to be talking about. Try to match the solver up to that, okay? Now, on the other hand, so that's a mistake, but that's often not a fatal mistake. But here, here's, a, here's, a, here's a fatal mistake. Let's try this one. Hey. Okay, this problem is very stiff, okay? So I really don't want to do what it's going to do, so I'm going to turn. Do you, ever, you know the Control-C thing? If you ever go to MATLAB and it's doing something and you want it to stop, hit Control-C, it terminates. It beats closing the application and opening it back up. Just hit Control-C and it'll stop. Okay. So let's say you got this one here. Right. We've done this one. So this is a stiff solver, stiff model, run it. I don't want the output, though. Okay, that was pretty fast, right? I could tick it if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. This, sh this should be sufficient here. Here's a non-stiff solver, same model. Actually, it's, I, I've ran it an hour. It doesn't, doesn't stop. Okay. So you can see the difference now. If you use the right solver, it takes like one second. If you use the wrong solver, an hour later, you don't have an answer. So again, you're getting the message, right? It's like make sure the, the solver matches the model. We're going to talk more about the stiffness and things like that in a moment. Terminate. Okay. All right. So with that in mind, now we're going to do a, a little, another little toy example. Okay. So when I, d when I did the lecture on um, ODE models, right, we went through and we derived like seven different models or something. Started with liquid level, then it went to mixing, then it went to, you know, heat, stirred tank heater, then it went to simple reactors. It ended with that differential bounce on the plug flow reactor that you guys look stunned <laughs> by the whole concept. Um, so this is one of the models taken directly from that lecture, okay? 
So you might recall this is a system where we have two streams, mass flow rate, mass fraction of one of the two components, because there's only two, it's binary. We take these two streams, we mix them together in the tank, and we're interested in what comes out. Okay? So we're interested in the composition, the, mol the mass fraction coming out, let's say. We're also interested in the level, because this level can vary. So we got two differential equations, one for the level, one for the mol uh, molar mass fraction, whichever one you want to consider. Okay? Um, the parameters of this model, that was right. This, this CV was a measure of the resistance to flow coming out here. It's so-called valve coefficient, um, density of the fluid, cross-sectional layer of the tank, so on. Okay? So this model here is a nonlinear model, right, because the two dependent variables are H and, and c this mass fraction X3, and H ap appears in the denominator here. So this, you wouldn't be able to solve this analytically using eigenvalues and eigenvectors and things. So we'll solve it in MATLAB. Here I give you some parameters, right? So anytime you have a model like this, I have to give you everything on the right-hand side except H and X3, that is, right? So here's the flow rate of the first stream. It's very dilute in the component of interest, right? Only 10%. Here's the flow rate of the second stream. It's much more concentrated in the second. So, right, we're going to mix a dilute stream and a really reasonably high flow rate with a concentrated stream and a lower flow rate and see what happens, okay? There's the valve coefficient. There's row A appears a multiplicative pair, so I'm just telling you that's row times A. I just made up these numbers. These don't have units. Sorry, okay? All right, so we want to use MATLAB. We want to integrate these equations forward. So I have everything I need here. I have all the parameter values. I'm going to have to give you two initial conditions. What's the initial level? What's the initial mass fraction of X3? Okay? All right. So first thing I have to do is write a function that does this. Okay? So you, mem you remember the idea, right? I have two differential equations like this again. Um, and I have to, if given X and Y, which in this case is T, right? X is T in this case. Okay? Um, and given, so, well, I played a little trick here, which I'll explain in a minute, but let's just say, given the value of Y1 and Y2, which means level and X3, I need to evaluate the right-hand side of the equation, right? The right, none of our, our models almost never depend explicitly on the independent variable, right? You never see us write out a model where time appears on the right-hand side of the equation. It always appears in the derivatives. It never seems to appear anywhere else, okay? So I've written this function because I wanted to. It's called binary mixing, I guess, is what I called it. So it's binary mixing.m. And so the idea is that MATLAB is going to give me the values of level, H3, and mass fraction, X3. And I have to evaluate these two right-hand sides of these equations right there. Okay? So what I'm going to do, first of all, is just define all the parameters. Right? Flow rate of the first stream, mass fraction first stream, same thing for the second stream. There's the density times the cross-sectional area. There's the valve coefficient. Okay? Just defining these. So if I want to change them, I can easily just change them in one place. Okay? It gives me x as a two-dimensional vector. To make life easy, I want to call um, the first one h and the second one x3. Because it's easier for me to remember h and x3 than it is x principally 1 and x principally 2. It's just for convenience. And then those are the two equations on the right-hand side, right? That's the, diff that's the right-hand side of the equation for level in MATLAB syntax, obviously. And then there's the right-hand side of the differential equation for X3, okay? And I return these in F1 and F2, okay? So the way it works is MATLAB gives me values of X, which means level and mass fraction, and I give it back a vector function, a vector containing the right-hand side evaluated of the two equations. Okay? That's all I have to do. And MATLAB figures out what x to give me. Does everything else. But obviously, you can't integrate a set of equations that look like this if MATLAB has no idea what f is. <laughs> so it's got a set of generic tools. It's your job to give it f and evaluate f when it needs it evaluated. Okay? So that's what the function, that's what the function looks like. All right. Now, here's how I'm going to use the function. So I'm going to do a variety of different calculations with this, or several different calculations. OK. Now, if we look at this system, um, everyone hopefully remembers what a steady state is, right? So we've got a differential equation that looks like this, equals f, forget the t, never appears there, like this, right? And a steady state means 
values of the vector y that make the derivative equal to 0. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is use this function to find the steady state, and then I'm going to integrate the model from that steady state. I'll explain as we go along. Okay? So this command here you should be familiar with because we already did this. This command says, take my function that I just showed you called binary mixing, put it in quotes or put an at sign in there, your choice. Remember, this is solve nonlinear algebraic equations. Guess the answer. And then there's other options here that I'm not specifying, so just put empty brackets there. Use F solve. You have to use F solve because it's more than one equation. And give me back the solution as the steady state solution. You get this message back, it says it worked. Okay? And you get this answer. That means the steady state level is about 6, and the steady state mass fraction is about 0.23. Right? So this is where it helps to like, have a reality check. Like, if you got back this mass fraction and it was 1.3, you should say, I think I made an error. <laughs> okay, so you should always at least look at the results. The biggest problem I see with students using things like this, and when you're seniors, you'll use something called Aspen, is they just accept whatever the thing produces. Even if it says, I failed. If it gives them numbers, they go, yeah, I, got, I got the answer. And I say, well, the answer makes no sense, and it said it failed. It goes, what's your point? You know, so um, make sure the tools you're using actually work, and the answer makes sense. So there's the steady state, right? So when the level and composition are not changing anymore at the conditions I told you, that's the level. And that's the composition. Okay? All right. So, that's the first thing I'm doing, and that's the answer right there. Now, here's a very important trick. Okay? So, if you look at the function I've written here, which is right there. What you'll notice about this function is it doesn't have the time argument. Right? Like it doesn't have t comma x. But if you look at MATLAB, okay, so I use this to solve the nonlinear algebraic equations. When you solve those, there is no t because you're at steady state, right? When you solve differential equations, MATLAB wants to give you a t, t comma x. So if you try to use this function like this directly, it'll give you an error. Okay? I mean, I could show you if you want. I'll show you in a minute. But I don't want to write two, I want one function called binary mixing for algebraic equations and one for differential equations. The only difference being, for, the al for this case, it's x, and for the case I'm about to solve, it's t comma x. I don't want to keep write them multiple times. So you can actually do something to redefine the arguments of your function so you can use it again to solve the differential equations, and that's what this command here does. Okay? It says, please define a function called df. You can call it anything you want. Bob, Tony, Sally, if you like. I want this function df to be this function here, but I want the arguments to be t and x instead of just x. Okay? The value of this is I can use the same function to solve the nonlinear algebraic equations as the differential equations. Otherwise, I'd have to modify the function I just showed you, put t comma x, save it as a new name. Every time I wanted to change one, I'd have to change them both. It's not very manageable. Okay? So this allows you to redefine the arguments of the function to be, so this is equivalent to having this thing. It'll probably give me an error because it'll want to run it. But that, this is equivalent to redefining a function. df equals that. Okay. So now you can run the same code as before. This isn't really a command, so I'm not going to run it. All right, so if you follow that, Okay, so that's what this command did right here. And now I'm going to issue this command, which is going to integrate the equations. Okay, so what does this command do? It says, please use this solver, OD45. Why am I using 4.5? Because I think this is an innocuous problem that's not stiff. All stiff solvers have an S at the end. So this one's not stiff, I don't think. It looks I'm going to use the function I just defined called df. Okay? It's the same as binary mixing x comma t. I'm going to integrate this from time 0 to 50. My initial condition is going to be the steady state I just found, those two values there. Okay? And then I'm not going to use these options. So 
if you issue this thing, and then let's say you plot, I probably should do a different, well, let's see what t cum x looks like. It's going to plot both. Okay, well, you say that's pretty boring, but this is what you expect, right? Because you, you integrated a system from a steady state, and you didn't change anything, so it just stayed there. That's what a steady state is. So that's the steady state mole frac or mass fraction. That's the steady state level. This is like a, how do you call this? Uh, not a proof of concept, kind of reality check, right? If you think you found the steady state and you integrate from the steady state and it doesn't stay there, then something weird going on. So I'm just, this is what you should get, okay? All right. Now, let's say, just, just to prove my point here, if you thought you could do this, Right, you didn't worry about the number of arguments here. I think MATLAB's going to hate you. Okay, so getting a command like this, you probably don't know what it means. But what it means is I want to give your function t and x, and your function only accepts x. So I can't do it. So that's why it's important to do this read definition here. Okay. Or write two functions, one to solve the algebraic equations, one to solve the differential equations with different arguments, your choice. Kind of onerous, though, to do it the other way. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to int integrate the same equations, except I'm going to take a more interesting initial condition. And the initial condition is some integrate, right, same model. That's the time span. The initial condition is going to be level equal 1, mass fraction equals 0. So that means my initial condition is the thing has a little bit of liquid in it, doesn't have any of the component of interest in it. Then I start feeding the components in, and I want to see how it evolves over time. And because I'm notoriously lazy, I'm going to do this. So hopefully something good happened. Okay. So that's what the plot looks like. So it's plotted. You, I did this. If you go back and look at the command, it's a special command that allows you to plot two, dif two different y-axes. It's useful if the things have wi really different scales, right? Because if I plot these on the same scale, you'll barely see the, the green changing because the green scale is so small compared to the blue. The blue is the level, and the green is the composition. So I plot them on two different axes so I can see them clearly, OK? And so you can see I started from um, the, the uh, Level being 1, and then it went up to, guess what? The steady state value. It's not quite there. You have to go a little bit longer, but it's getting very close. The composition started from, uh, oh, down here. There we go. Composition started at 0 and then went up to its steady state value. You also notice the, the composition gets to its steady state faster than the level does, right? And if this, was, if this did this a lot faster than this, this problem would be stiff. But it's, it's not stiff because it doesn't happen that much differently. OK? All right. And then just to complete, I, 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 I labeled the axes and things. And if you, you get plots that look like this, I'd have showed them to you. Now they're labeled. OK? I mean, I'm hoping at this point everyone knows how to label a plot in MATLAB. There's different, if you, if you want, it's different to label these plots with two y axes. Go look at the notes that I just. The previous slide will show you how to do it. All right. So here's your problem. This is enough listening to me. And I'm going to help you because I think um, you'll need help. All right. 